Exynos and Snapdragon. We've been hearing these two names for quite a while now, mostly because of the controversial decision of Samsung to use different chipsets in their phones that they sell in different areas of the world. Exynos is widely known to be the lesser of the two in Samsung's last few flagships, as Snapdragon overtook it by a minimum of 10% in overall testing for the S20 Ultra. Samsung has claimed that this year's Exynos chip will be very, very close to, if not on the same level as a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. The Exynos 2200 is a solution for gamers looking for a flagship smartphone. With the Xclips GPU, it's time to get serious about mobile gaming. Playtime is over. So what we're gonna do is run some tests to see how big an improvement the new Exynos 2200 is over the last year's 2100. Some interesting results await you, so let the facts speak. Starting off, we have Adobe Lightroom. I could go through what all of these apps and programs do, but instead, I'll just link you to our amazing top tier chipset comparison that we recently did if you want an extra detailed explanation of our process. So, where was I? Oh yeah, Lightroom. We've got our presets ready to go, so it's time to apply them to the 50 JPEG and 50 RAW photos and see which chipset is better suited for the task. Interestingly enough, the Exynos 2100 applies the presets in only 15 seconds, while the 2200 needs 38 seconds, which means that it's 60% slower. I'm hoping this doesn't become a trend, or it could be quite problematic for Samsung and its fans. After the presets have been applied, we're gonna fire things up and hit that render button. This was actually neck and neck, as the 2200 was able to take care of things in 8 minutes and 49 seconds, with last year's 2100 finishing the render in 9 minutes and 46 seconds, which means that this year's Exynos is 10% faster in that regard. How fast can you click that like button and subscribe to the channel? Let's find out. 2000 years later. Moving forward, or rather, standing still, because if you watched our last chipset comparison video, you'll know that Adobe Rush doesn't work on the Exynos 2200 for some reason. We did all the resets again, and there was even an update that we downloaded to no avail. The 2100 was able to render out 4K video along with the B-roll and graphics animations in 2 minutes and 50 seconds. We hope that one day, we'll be able to run this test with the 2200. What we can do is try out Microsoft Excel with the same huge 60,000 line file we used last time. Even though it's just Excel and most computers would still be able to open it in just a couple of seconds, it's a bit more demanding on a phone when you've got an unreasonable amount of data. The Exynos 2200 was able to comprehend all of the information in just 18 seconds, while the 2100 needed 5 seconds more, which put the newer chip ahead in speed by 27%. Now that we've gotten the manual test out of the way, let's once again move on to the renowned and much appreciated Geekbench, 3D Mark, and Intuitu. For Geekbench, there was actually a huge difference, perhaps even more than I was expecting. Last year's Exynos 2100 achieved a score of 512 on a single core test, while the 2200 almost doubled it with 977 points. For multi-core, we saw a similar result. 2176 for the older and 3576 for the newer model. This is effectively a 64% difference between the two. With how things are going, I expected an even bigger difference for 3D Mark, but this actually wasn't the case. In fact, I found out that the stability rating had barely improved, which was kind of disappointing because this is an area where the Snapdragon completely blows Exynos away. The 2100 managed to get 1802 points for its best loop and fell all the way down to 1194 for its worst loop, giving it a stability rating of 66.3% while the 2200 got better scores with 2138 points for its best loop and 1323 points for its worst, the stability rating came out even lower at 61.9%. This is an indicator that the longer and harder you push the Exynos chipset, the greater chance it has of being throttled when compared to the other top tier brands. Last up is Intuitu, which will help us round out this competition. The Exynos 2100 reached a score of 551,295 in its last benchmark test, while the newer and improved 2200 scored 797,250, 44% higher overall. This was similar to Geekbench levels of improvement, which is always a positive. So, Taking a general look at the results shows us that Samsung is definitely doing something right, as this year's model has given us better results in the majority of the tests. However, the stability level in the 3D Mark test coming out lower on the newer version does make me question some things. What do you guys think about the results? Is the improvement enough? 
Can Exynos catch up to Snapdragon in the following one or two years? Let us know what you think in the comment section below and make sure to like and subscribe so we can keep on going. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon.